Hello, everyone. Um, welcome to the PC, PC endpoint uh, subsystem open items discussion. Let me go straight to the slides. Okay. So this is the agenda for today's discussion. So uh, uh, first, I'll come to uh, present the state of the uh, world of support in the PC endpoint subsystem. And uh, next, I'm going to propose using Cramo for uh, testing the PC endpoint subsystem, uh, which is currently lacking. And then the third one is uh, uh, proposing a way to uh, send the doorbell from the host to the endpoint end device, because the PC aspect hasn't defined that. So I'll try to cover at least first two things today. Uh, let's see. So let me give you a quick recap of what happened last year. Um, so last year, I presented three proposals for adding the Vertios uh, support in the PC endpoint subsystem. And out of three, I, we, I got consensus to move with the proposal from Sunsuke. Um, so this was the proposal uh, that was agreed last year. So on the left side, we have the host system, uh, which is going to act as the Vertio front end. And on the right side, we have the endpoint device, which is the physical endpoint device, unlike the uh, uh, virtual PCI device in the virtualized environment. So uh, that is going to act as the uh, Vertio backend. And uh, so the Vertio backend is going to expose the uh, Vertio device to the uh, front end through PCI transport. And uh, as I said, the difference is going to be, uh, in this case, the uh, endpoint is going to be the real physical uh, endpoint device, and unlike in the virtualized environment. So when I tried to implement that proposal on uh, some of our Qualcomm endpoint devices, I actually uh, hit few showstopper bugs. Oops, not this one, actually. Um, so this one, even though it's a pretty good book, the complexity of uh, the source of the bugs uh, that I'm going to describe is not anywhere near to the ones described in this book. So I actually hit few implementation issues in the uh, agreed proposal. Um, luckily, those implementation issues were not related to Qualcomm devices, which is a surprise. So uh, in that proposal, there was no MSI or MSIX support. It, was, uh, it, it only had index. Uh, don't ask me why. And uh, that really um, that really affected the performance of the Vertio uh, transport. And then it only exposed the legacy Vertio devices only, because if you know Vertio, there are two versions of the spec, right? The legacy Vertio spec and then the modern Vertio spec. And this one, unfortunately, supported only the legacy one. And then the third one was there was no IMMU support. Um, <clears throat> so everything actually worked on that uh, I mean, so the Sunshuke actually tested that proposal on, an, uh, I think, uh, Renesis SOC, uh, both host and endpoint. And in that SOC, these were not, uh, not an issue. But if you take any latest uh, endpoint SOCs, and these three things needs to be addressed. Um, and then I also identified some race between the Vertio device and the driver when, uh, when I uh, brought up the Vertio support on Qualcomm endpoint devices. So let me go through each and every issues, and uh, I'll also propose the solution of uh, how to fix them. So first one is uh, how to get MSI and MSIX. So the Vertio spec itself supports uh, both index and MSIX, but no MSI. I don't know why. Um, even though MSI has its own issues, um, <clears throat> somebody might. <clears throat> but uh, the problem with this thing is that uh, most of the low-end endpoint devices out there in the market don't support MSIX, but they only support MSI. I think somebody might be cursing the hardware designers in the crowd. So. But I actually sub submitted a proposal for adding MSI to the Vertio spec. It was pretty much straightforward. Um, I submitted a proposal. I got some constructive feedback for the version 1, and then I submitted version 2. And uh, there has been silence for uh, like uh, six months or so. And then I also submitted the corresponding Linux kernel patch to enable MSI in the Vertio driver, and that also didn't get any response. But I think things are looking good. I, I don't see any uh, blocker here. Sorry? You need the specs before the patch goes in. Well, I did submit the uh, patch for adding it in the spec, and uh, I also wanted to show how it looks like in the driver world. So I just submitted these two things. And, uh, yeah, but again, the patch, submitting the kernel patch without the specs being finalized is kind of pointless. Of course, of course. I, I agree with that. But at least I was hoping that the uh, spec patch at least gets merged first. But uh, I don't know. 
So the next one was uh, supporting the modern Vertigo device, because I realized that uh, uh, exposing the legacy Vertigo device is not going to be a smart way to do in 2024. So, but when I tried to implement the modern Vertigo de uh, device in Qualcomm Associates, I uh, hit few roadblocks. So one of which is that uh, it requires configurable PCI vendor capability. Um, so the modern Vertigo spec expects you to uh, have this uh, PCI vendor capability registers in such, designed in such a way that it exposes the offsets of the Vertigo structures, uh, like where the uh, Vertigo structures lie in the specific power region, et cetera. But um, these, yeah, these are used to, I mean, these offsets are used to uh, discover the Vertigo structures, which were actually hard-coded in the legacy Vertigo spec. And unfortunately, these, uh, when the capability registers are not configurable on the uh, production-ready devices. And this is not a problem in a virtualized environment like Quemu, uh, because our hypervisors, where the uh, virtual PCI devices are going to be exposed, and uh, the hypervisor or Quemu will have the complete control over the device. But when it comes to a real uh, PCI endpoint device, uh, the hardware vendors wouldn't allow us to configure the vendor capability registers. They have some fixed vendor capability, and we have to work with that. So I'm now working on a proposal to uh, uh, allow Vertio spec to discover the uh, Vertio structures uh, without using that uh, vendor capability. I haven't submitted it, and I'm thinking about going with a fixed offset uh, in the bar because I don't know how, how uh, I mean, how how else we can actually expose this information without the vendor capability because vendor capability seems to be a nice way, and that's why people stick to it. So, uh, yeah. This was one such thing, and then uh, the next one is IMMU support. Um, again, most of the modern endpoint SOCs or the host uh, platforms, they have IMMU for PCI and other peripherals as well. So, uh, <clears throat> so if you have IMMU, the bus address, the PCI address is not going to be the same as the uh, physical address, right? It has to be translated. And uh, so, uh, but the problem with the, the uh, uh, legacy Vertio spec is that it actually works only with the uh, uh, physical address. So uh, whenever the uh, uh, front end, it uh, exposes the address of the Vertio uh, word queues to the back end. And those addresses are actually the physical addresses. And unfortunately, when the uh, uh, endpoint tries to access those addresses, in, if that is an IMME on the host, it will trigger an IMME fault because uh, you cannot access the physical address. You have to use the translator address. And this issue is going to get solved when we migrate to the modern Vertio spec. And uh, so this is, this is the another thing I discovered uh, when I tried to implement that, because I found some race between the Vertio device and the driver during the initialization phase. Uh, so the reason for the race is that uh, the Vertio spec itself uh, uses some registers in such a way, like it has some device uh, feature register, which is a 32-bit register, but it uses that register to expose 64-bit value. And uh, the way it achieves is that using another register called, uh, uh, I think, uh, set queue register. So, uh, so whenever uh, the set queue register, say, uh, I mean, the host writes zero to the set queue register, the for a lower 32 bits uh, value were read from the device feature register. And whenever one is written, it has to read the uh, upper 64 bit. It's not a problem in a uh, virtualized environment because whenever you write, whenever, uh, let's take an example of Quemu, whenever the guest writes to an endpoint uh, bar region, we will, uh, you know, uh, we will trigger, uh, or the uh, Quemu will actually uh, trap the taxes and then uh, it can do whatever it wants to, you know, uh, uh, as a, as a uh, action for that uh, register thing. But that kind of trapping is not really possible on real endpoint devices because when you write to an uh, endpoint bar, it just, the write just goes through it. There is no way to trap that thing in the real PC endpoint devices. So we are actually seeing a race uh, due to this uh, behavior. And uh, for that, I'm going to propose uh, adding some sync points between the Vertio device and the driver. So uh, whenever so let, let's, in, let's take an example of the device feature. So whenever the uh, host wants to read the upper 64-bit 64, uh, 64 value, it has to wait for a sync uh, between the host and the endpoint. Then, oh, then only it can actually go and read the uh, upper 64-bit value. 
I don't know it's the best solution or not, but uh, I'm just thinking about uh, uh, proposing it. Let's see, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to propose in the coming days. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm going real quick. Um, the next thing is using Cramu for testing the PCI endpoint subsystem. Uh, so the problem with uh, PCI endpoint subsystem is that whenever you want to test it, you need to have two systems. One is the host and then the another one is the endpoint. And it's not always feasible to carry these two things around. So I'm thinking about using uh, uh, a software model to you know, test this uh, PCI endpoint subsystem and Cramu seems to be the natural choice. So this is the uh, setup what we need to have on the host. So we have the uh, root complex that is emulated by the Cremu, and then that will be controlled by the controller driver in Linux kernel, which is the guest. And then we also need to have some endpoint test driver, uh, test device emulated in the Cremu itself, and that will be controlled by the uh, endpoint test device in kernel. So the kernel part is already there. So pretty much the, uh, there is no issue with the uh, host side of Cremu. But when it comes to the endpoint side, what we need to have is an uh, emulated endpoint controller in Cremo and also corresponding driver in the kernel. And uh, so that driver is going to talk to the EP of test driver. And uh, when we stitch to these two things together, what we need is a communication between the endpoint test device and then the emulator endpoint controller device because these two things need to talk to each other. And these two things can be in the same host as two different guest operating systems or they can be in a uh, different host, that, that's implementation defined. For this uh, solution, we have a proposal, again from Sunsuke. So uh, he, in his proposal, he uh, implemented in such a way that it requires two guests on the same host, and on the endpoints, uh, and these two things communicate over Unix do domain socket. I mean, this, the communication between the endpoint controller and then the endpoint test device happens over the Unix domain socket, because we need a way to transfer the uh, TLPs from the endpoint to the host to, in order to simulate the uh, actual PCI communication. Um, on, the, on the endpoint side, so uh, his proposal has the PCI endpoint controller implemented as a Cremo PCI device. And then that requires a new controller device uh, driver on the, uh, in the Linux kernel. Unfortunately, I'm not in favor of that because uh, when, you, when you are anyway going to emulate the PCI controller, why can't you just go and emulate the existing PCI controller device, right? Um, like uh, DesignVar or something like that. Why would you need a new uh, controller uh, device? And then on the host, we, uh, his proposal has the Cremu EPF bridge device, and this EPF bridge device is exposing the uh, PCI endpoint device to the guest operating system. At the same time, it also communicates with the endpoint, uh, endpoint side uh, of the uh, uh, guest operating system. So the, uh, um, the problem with, again, the problem is that the uh, EPF bridge device is something like, uh, it's not a real device. And it's it kind of acting like a bridge. But in my opinion, this has to be something like uh, what I described in the diagram. It has to be like a, a real. Uh, PCI device, and under the hood, it has to communicate between the endpoint side, and also it has to translate that thing to the uh, existing uh, existing uh, guest operating system. So, but again, the patches has been submitted, and uh, there were not much review uh, happened, and then uh, it well, it just went dormant. Somebody needs to revive this. And then the third one is interesting, because uh, the PCI spec has defined MSI index or MSIX <clears throat> in order to trigger the uh, interrupt from the endpoint side to the host. But it hasn't defined a way to trigger end, uh, interrupts on the host, uh, sorry, endpoint from the host side. And that's what we are trying to achieve, because whenever we want, to, uh, we want the bidirectional communication has to happen, we need to have interrupts uh, firing from both ends, right? And for achieving this, um, <clears throat> So for achieving this, uh, we were trying to repurpose the uh, interrupt controller in the endpoint side. Uh, so all the interrupt controller have the interrupt vector address, right? And then in the interrupt vector address, you have to write some values to trigger the interrupts. So what we are trying to achieve is that 
expose that interpreter address to the host side, and then let the host know what kind of value it has to write to that address so that whenever the host wants to trigger an in doorbell or interrupt to the endpoint device, it can just write to that address a specific value so that the interrupt gets uh, triggered on the endpoint device. Um, so this also got submitted by Frankly, and uh, this got a pro uh, feedback from Thomas uh, to you know, design using IMS. I think IMS got uh, uh, merged in 6.11, but uh, I haven't really looked into how to achieve this thing using IMS. But uh, this looks like a you know, much uh, needed proposal because currently we, there is no spec defined way to trigger doorbells on the endpoint side. And uh, when you, whenever we want to go with uh, things like Vert.io for PC endpoint subsystem, this is pretty much needed. Otherwise, the endpoint is going to just go. Well, but no, you, you can do that. I mean, you, you're going to break, your host can be anything, anything that supports Vert.io. Uh, and, and if you have to modify that thing to raise an interrupt for having your endpoint working correctly, you're just breaking the protocol. No, so you can't do that. No, it's not, uh, it's not breaking the protocol. The it is, because if you read the Vertio spec, yeah. uh, um, putting a, a doorbell somewhere in some memory doesn't tell you that you have to raise an interrupt with it. Well, not necessarily. It's not Depends yeah. on, on the currently protocol. It's not but defined, but you cannot just pull the uh, thing from you know, a real endpoint device. Right? It might work well for hypervisor environment, but it won't work well for the uh, you know, real endpoint device because it's just an endpoint device and it, it can yeah, have It does work, processes. you just, just pull like crazy until you get something. Well, I don't know, I mean. <laughs> it works. Yeah, sure, it's not, it's not uh, pretty, that's, that's for sure, but yeah. it works. It works, but what I'm saying is that the endpoint device is going to be a general purpose Linux uh, computer, right? And uh, if you want it to just pull some specific registers of Vert.io, and uh, if it gets some high priority thing to done, and uh, you are going to miss the notifications, right? Mm -hmm. And that's what we are seeing. No, you're not. Well, that's after Well, if you're missing is. notification, you have a bug. I mean, I've done the NVMe endpoint driver. Yeah. It's coming. Uh, I'm late on that. It's coming, and that's what we're doing. We're just pulling the, the, the doorbells for the, for the SQs because that's the only way we have to discover that new commands are coming in because there's no interrupt. Yeah, it works just perfectly. We never miss anything. That's and latency-wise, it's actually pretty fast, much faster than interrupts because that's we, interesting. we don't. That's interesting to <laughs> see. Okay. So. Let's see, yeah, we can discuss it offline, yeah. Yep, that's it. Right, thank you. So, thank you very much. Before wrapping it up, I think I want to mention that tomorrow, three o'clock, uh, there is a BOF on PCI uh, authentication SPDM, if I'm not mistaken. So, I mean, so at please attend it if you're interested. And last but not least, I mean, on behalf of uh, all the microconference organizers, thank you very much for showing up and showing interest for BFIU, IUMMU, and PCI. Thank you very much and see you next year. Thank you. Thank you.